Hi everyone, my name is Saldina and I make IT and programming related videos on my channel. So if that is something that is of interest to you, consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up as well. And in this particular video, I want to talk about inheritance. So here I have my Visual Studio and here I have some code that we have written in the previous tutorials of this course. So if you haven't watched those, make sure to watch them. The links are going to be in the description of this video. And now I'm going to go very quickly over the code that we have here. So I have created a class that is called YouTube channel. And that class has four private properties, name, owner name, subscribers count, and then published video titles. And then we have a couple of public methods as well. We have a constructor which just assigns, initializes these variables here. And then we have getInfo method that just writes out information, the values that are stored inside these properties here. And then as well, we have subscribe and unsubscribe methods. Our subscribe method increases our subscribers counter and then our unsubscribe method decreases that subscribers counter. But first we have to check if that subscribers count is greater than zero. So those would be subscribe and unsubscribe methods. And then we have this publish video method as well that just adds a new item, adds a new title to this published videos list. Okay, now what is going to happen if I want to create another type of YouTube channel, a specific type of YouTube channel, which is going to be, for example, um, cooking YouTube channel. So I should copy these properties, right? Well, that can be one approach, but the quicker and better approach is going to be to inherit this YouTube channel class. So let's do that. Let's create another type of channel. So let's create another class. Let's say class, and then let's call it cooking YouTube channel like this. Okay, now I have created a class that is called cooking YouTube channel. And in order to inherit this YouTube channel class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this column sign and then I'm going to say public YouTube channel like this. And in this way, my cooking YouTube channel is going to inherit my YouTube channel. And that means that my cooking YouTube channel is going to have everything that my YouTube channel has. Now, this public access modifier means that whatever is public in this class here, it is going to be public here as well. So in this derived class. And one very important thing is to know that this class is called base class. So the one that you inherit from that is base class. And then the derived class is going to be this one here. So the one that inherits from the base class is called derived class. And in this particular situation, our cooking YouTube channel is derived class. Now, what is going to happen if I want to create, for example, an object of this cooking YouTube channel? So I'm going to say cooking YouTube channel and let's call it YouTube channel like this. Okay. Now, as you can see, it says that default constructor of cooking YouTube channel cannot be referenced. Now, that is because we do not have a constructor for this class here. So let's create one. Let's create a constructor. So I'm going to copy this name and then add these parentheses. Okay. And now if I hover over this, it says that the constructor is inaccessible. So we still have a, an error, but we have a different error, which means that we are making progress. So because this constructor is inaccessible, I will have to make it public to make it accessible out, outside of this class here. So I'm going to say public. Okay. And now my uh, constructor is going to be accessible. But there is another thing that we have to do, and that is going to be inside this constructor, we have to receive properties that we are going to initialize in our constructor. And those are going to be these two properties, name and 
owner name. So here I'm going to say that my constructor receives two properties. So string name and then string owner name. So the owner of that channel. And what I'm going to do when I receive these two properties, I'm not going to initialize them here in my constructor because I am inheriting from a class that already knows how to construct, how to initialize these two pr particular properties. So I'm going to call the constructor of that class. So I'm going to call the constructor of this YouTube channel class. So here I'm going to put this column sign and then I'm going to invoke its constructor. So I'm going to say YouTube channel and then I will pass these two parameters here. So I'm going to say name and then owner name like this. And now our base class, our YouTube channel class is going to construct to initialize actually the value of these two properties. And as you can see here, we have an error that asks us to pass these two values to our constructor. So we are going to pass two parameters. The first one is going to be the name of our channel. So let's say that that is going to be, for example, Amy's Kitchen, like this. And then owner is going to be a um, girl named Amy. Let's put that here as well. Okay. Now, after I have created an object of this cooking YouTube channel, what I should be able to do is I should be able to access all of these public methods that my base class has. So all of these methods from my YouTube channel class should be available for my uh, cooking YouTube channel. So here I'm going to say YouTube channel dot and then, as you can see, these are available. So get info, publish video, subscribe, unsubscribe. Let's write out info about my channel like this. And if I run it now, well, you can see that we have Amy's, Amy's Kitchen channel. Owner is Amy. It has zero subscribers and it has no videos as well. So let's publish a couple of videos for Amy, Amy's Kitchen channel. So here I'm going to say... Okay, before this get info function, I'm going to say YouTube channel dot, and then let's say publish video of, for example, apple pie, like this. And then let's publish another video, let's say, for example, chocolate cake, like this. And uh, now if I run this program, as you can see, we have, oh, we have two videos. And let's as well say that people like these videos, so they decide to subscribe to Amy's Kitchen channel. So I'm going to say YouTube channel dot subscribe. So, uh, for example, two people decide to subscribe to her channel. And if I run my program again, you can see that now we have two subscribers as well. So we have been able to invoke all of these methods that are implemented in our base class. So here from the object of our derived class. So from the object of this derived class here. Now this derived class, this cooking YouTube channel can have its own members, meaning things that are specific for this class only. So let's say, for example, that we want to create a method that is going to be called, uh, for example, practice. So I'm going to say void practice like this. And then what this method should do, it should just make our user that has this cooking YouTube channel, it should say that this user is practicing cooking and then learning new recipes and things like that. So I'm going to say see out like this. And that let me copy this part of the code because I don't want to make a typo like this. So it says that uh, our YouTube channel's user is practicing cooking, learning new recipes, and then experimenting with spices because I guess that's something that you should do if you have a cooking YouTube channel. And let me add end line here as well like this. So now if I decide to invoke this method, this method is going to be available only for objects of this 
cooking YouTube channel. So I'm going to say YouTube channel like this. And then let's say practice like this. Now, um, let me very quickly change the name of this YouTube channel object because I want to create another object that is going to be of uh, this YouTube channel type and I want to call that YouTube channel. So here I'm going to say um, cooking YouTube channel and I'm going to paste that name here and then here and here, here as well. Okay, now we have named this object cooking YouTube channel and if I run this program you can see that at the end it says practicing cooking, learning new recipes, experimenting with spices. Now, as I already said, this practice method should be available only for the objects of this cooking YouTube channel class. So that means if I decide to create an object of this class here, this base class, that class is not going to have this practice method. And let's prove that very quickly. So here I'm going to create an object of YouTube channel class type and let's call that object YouTube channel. That's why I changed the name of this object like this and let's say that that is going to be my channel for example. Um, code beauty like this and then let's say that owner is my name Saldina. So now if I try to access this practice method on my YouTube channel, so I press dot, you can see that that method is not available for this base class. It is available only for this cooking YouTube channel class because this practice is very specific method, meaning um, this Code Beauty channel, which is oriented to programming and IT, does not really benefit from learning uh, recipes and experimenting with spices, practicing cooking and things like that. So this channel should probably have some other way of practicing uh, because it is different type of channel. So I'm going to delete this code here. Okay, and let's repeat this one more time. So we have created a derived class which is called cooking YouTube channel and we have inherited everything that our YouTube channel class has by saying public and then the name of our base class and this public access modifier is going to allow us to have whatever is public here to have that public here as well and then we have created a constructor for our cooking YouTube channel and in that constructor we receive two parameters name and owner name and since our base class constructor knows how to initialize those two, we have here invoked this base class constructor. And then here we have created as well a method that is called practice. And that method just says that our user is practicing cooking and he is learning new recipes and experimenting with spices. Now there's one more thing that I want to show you and that is going to be to Let's create another object of this cooking YouTube channel and that is going to be, uh, let's say, cooking YouTube channel 2 and let's call it um, John's Kitchen like this and owner is going to be, for example, John. Now, what is going to happen if I say, for example, that this second YouTube channel, so this cooking YouTube channel 2, John's YouTube channel is practicing. I'm going to um, comment these two because I don't need them. And if I run my program now, you can see that it says two times, practicing cooking, learning new recipes, experimenting with spices, and then the same line here. So you cannot really differentiate between which one is Amy's channel and which one is John's channel. So in order to make that a bit more understandable, I'm going to add a property here. So here I want to add the name of the owner of this channel. So here I'm going to say, let me copy this property like this. So owner name, and then let's say that that owner is practicing cooking, learning new recipes, experimenting with spices, and so on. But as you can see, this, this property here is not accessible. It says that member owner name is inaccessible and why is that the case why is it inaccessible because it is uh, 
private. And if you remember, private members can be accessed only within that class. And then public members can be accessed from outside of that class. But what happens if you want to have, for example, a certain property to be accessible in the derived class? Now, there is an access modifier for that as well. So that is going to be protected access modifier. So I'm going to say here protected like this. And then I'm going to move this owner name to my protected area like this. So now this owner name property should be accessible in derived classes as well. And as you can see, the error has disappeared. So now if I run my program, you can see that it says that Amy is practicing cooking, learning new recipes and experimenting with spices. And then this second line here says that John is practicing cooking and learning new recipes and experimenting with spices. So now we have made a difference. We have specified the name of our owner of the channel and we can understand what the code is doing um, a bit more. I hope that you understood what is inheritance and how it works in C++. And if you did, please like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon as well. And I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye.